Hey friends, welcome back. I assume you've heard about the latest cyber attack on Kasey and the huge impact it had on their customers. So today, we're gonna be talking about the anatomy of the attack, the impact, the facts, and how this kind of attacks can be avoided. If you are new to the channel, my name is Saif and I'm an information security professional based in the US. And on this channel, I share my experience in information security technology and productivity to help you have a successful career while staying healthy and productive. This is nothing new. Supply chain attacks are the new normal. It's raising because of the lucrative aspect and the reach of this kind of attacks. In 2019, only more than 100 managed service providers were impacted with this kind of attacks and got compromised. For those who never heard about Kaseya, it's a Miami-based tech company that makes softwares that allows MSPs to perform IT tasks remotely. Kaseya has around 40,000 customers, mostly in the United Kingdom and the US. So on July 2nd, the Kaseya VSA solution was used to deliver ransomware for more than 60 ISPs and around 1,500 customers. This impacted more than a million endpoints, and the ransomware gang Revel claimed the attack on their blog. Revel was also involved in an attack in 2019 targeting Kaseya. Since I want you to have the big picture and understand what happened on the attacker's side and on the vendor side, on the victim side, the attackers exploited a vulnerability on Kaseya's internet facing VSA servers. This same vulnerability was reported by the Dutch Institute of Vulnerability Disclosure back in April, but Kaseya didn't have time to remediate to the vulnerability. This zero day allowed the attackers to bypass authentication, upload files, and execute their code. All this while making sure that the logs are deleted from the IIS web servers and the database. Since the clients are managed by MSPs and those MSPs are connected to Kaseya, the attackers were able to reach the customers directly and push the ransomwares from the VSA servers to their endpoints. Now let's go into the details and see what happened step by step. Once they gain access to the system, bypass authentication, get admin access to the VSA server, they shut down all existing admin access to the server, delete the web and database logs, and then execute their agent. They pushed their malicious code as a fake VSA update. And that file was an agent.exe file that contained a legit version of Windows Defender, a script to disable existing features on the running Windows Defender on those VSA servers that will disable, for example, real-time monitoring and cloud file submission. And the last piece was the Revel ransomware itself. They also tried to tamper with other products like Sophos. And that's how they were able to push the ransomwares from the VSA servers to the customers. Customers using the on-prem VSA solution got impacted and got their endpoints encrypted with the Revel ransomware. The ransomware gang asked Kaseya for $70 million in order to decrypt the impacted devices and $50,000 for any single endpoint that the customers wanted to decrypt. And this makes this ransom one of the biggest in cybersecurity history. Now let's check the other side. What Kaseya was doing after this attack happened. Kaseya started publishing information about the attack and the mitigation going on on their customer support website regularly and also created runbooks to help the customers harden their system. But the first thing that Kaseya asked their customer is to shut down their VSA servers. Kaseya shut down their SaaS services, even though they claimed that only the on-prem VSA customers were impacted by this attack. And that's how they could make 36,000 of their customers safe from this attack. The next day, they published a tool that helped their customers search for any indicators of compromise just to confirm if they were impacted or not. Kaseya also met with the FBI and CISA to discuss system and network hardening recommendations that they will need to provide to their customers. On July 6, with the help of FireEye, 
Kaseya deployed enhanced security monitoring solution on their network and recommended to their customers to push FireEye agents. And finally, they announced that on July 11th, they will release the official patch for this zero day that caused all this mess. I agree with you, this looks scary and fast at the same time, but let's figure out how this could be avoided. That's why every customer need to be due diligent and make sure that they were not impacted because if your systems are not encrypted, doesn't mean that you are safe. You can use the Kaseya detection tool or search for other indicators of compromise, like IP addresses, .exe files, DLLs, or .crt files. I will put a link in the description that will give you the list of extensions, files, and hashes that will help you do your thread hunting. The second thing is about how customers could avoid being impacted by this attack. First, by implementing zero-risk based containment that makes sure that a high privilege or critical application is limited in what it can do and cannot impact the rest of the system. The other one is app isolation to make sure that the rest of the system cannot impact highly privileged or critical applications. Now let's talk about the most important part. What should you do if this kind of attack happens? First, make sure that your legal team can handle the situation. If not, you will need to reach out to an external lawyer specialized in this kind of scenarios that will help you manage the situation. If you don't have enough resources or expertise, they will help you hire incident response company to help you gain visibility on what's happening and take control of the situation. This will put you in a better situation when dealing with your cyber insurance company. Let me know if you like this kind of video and drop in the comment what would you do if you were in this kind of scenario. Thanks for watching and see you next week.